Fishing Gurus is brought to you in association with Daiwa. Welcome to Fishing Gurus, and more importantly, a venue that I've wanted to fish for a number of years. You see, on the face of it, this looks like any other commercial fishery, but it's not. It's run on a book-only basis, and the quality and size of fish that are in here is absolutely phenomenal. Carp pushing 30 pound, chub over eight, perch over five. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Rolf's Lake. Well, I'd like to say the weather's turned autumnal, but to be truth, it's absolutely freezing today. We're pushing, we're struggling for double figures. And because of the cold, I'm gonna use one of my favorite cold water methods, and that's roving around. We're gonna get on the end of the wind and on the back of the wind. We're gonna bait four or five different swims, and we're gonna use a couple of methods, and we're gonna try and catch every single fish within a rod limp for the bank. No more, no further out. And all we're using for bait, there we go, Going to walk around every single swim, put three or four amples in, that's it, of pellet. All we're using for bait is pellet and corn. So it couldn't be cheaper. I got this for what? 90p from a, from a supermarket and a pellet you can get in any decent tackle shop. It's cheap as chips for a kilo. And hopefully, in a few swims time and a couple of rotations of the lake, we'll get a few fish feeding. That's the plan anyway. Now, I appreciate during the middle of the summer, roving around on commercials can quite often be a little bit difficult because they're busy, but the great thing about this time of year is when the fair weather anglers put their rods away, stick them up in the loft for the winter, it leaves loads of swims to walk around and start priming the edges. And also, on them really cold days, keeps you nice and warm. And this is a prime example of what you're looking for, a really nice, quiet corner. I wouldn't normally, on a very, very cold wind like this, put bait in here, but I did see one stick his nut out earlier on. So, I'm gonna put a few grains, of corn, just down there. I don't want to go too close to the snags, although I am told that it's quite deep under here and they don't go right the way down, so it's perfectly safe to fish for them. So a few handfuls of corn and two or three handfuls of pellet. And hopefully, we'll come back here in half an hour's time once we've finished our lap of the lake. And there'll be a few carp, and if we're lucky, one of those big chub with their heads down. But for now, I'm chilly. I'm gonna go and find another good looking swim. Travelling light is the name of the game when you're roving around, whether it be on still waters or on rivers. And to be honest with you, I've got two methods in mind that I want to try and catch the fish within a rod length for the bank. The first one is pretty standard. You'll see an awful lot of matchmen using it, and they normally throw it up tight to the far bank or up tight to the island. But I'm going to use it right down the edge because it's fantastic for fishing just over a little bit of debris. Quite often these trees, the leaves die, they sink down to the bottom, and this presents a bait perfectly wherever you lay it. I've got eight pound drag line, two big blobs of putty about 18 inches and nine inches above, the flat method, which is there. I've got the small size. All I'm gonna be using that for is dipping it down in the edge, leaving it for maybe five, 10 minutes, hopefully nicking a quick bite, because remember I've been around, I've primed all of these spots before, so there should be fish, hopefully, if everything goes to plan, in the swim already with their heads down. I've got a short braided hook link of about three tops, four inches long. I've got a nice big size 10 QM1. When they go in, they don't come out. And an eight mil pellet on there as a hook bait. And all I'm doing is I'm molding a little bit of pellet around the feeder. I'm moulding it quite hard. I don't want it to break down too quickly because there's quite a few silverfish in here and I want the carp to nail it as soon as they come in. And that's it. We'll fish that. We'll rove all the way around the lake and fish as many swims as possible. I want to nick two or three fish on this method before I start working over to the float, which is quite quirky. But we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. Well, this is the first swim. To be quite honest, 
the first time I fish every single swim on every single rotation around here, I am expecting bites, so I've got butterflies in my belly. So I'm going to be creepy crawly, as quiet as possible. I'm going to lower the rig just down the edge where I've been feeding, and I'm going to stay well back from the bank. It's all about stealth. If there's fish down there, the last thing you want to do is go crashing the feeding on their head. And that, I didn't hear it at all, so rod tip just literally over the edge, and that's it. Give it 15 minutes, wait for it to rip off. You know, one of the best things about roving for me is that if you get something wrong, you bait a swim and the fish don't turn up, you're not committed to it. I've just laid that rig in, it's been in there probably seven or eight minutes now, and I'm just, I've not had a line and no nothing. It looks perfect but you don't really know whether a swim, swim's any good unless you actually put a bait in there and you just get that inert feeling in your belly. And my feeling in my belly is telling me to get on my toes and move. So I'll probably still put a little bit more bait in here when I leave, but at the moment there's a few fish over there on the other side of the lake on a swim that I have baited. And so I think I'm going to uh, do the off and get on the fish. I'm absolutely adamant to catch these fish today down the edge. My only issue at the moment is that they're all showing in open water in the deep bits so it might be a bit trickier than we first thought but I think this swim here in truth might come into play when the sun gets over the top of the trees and actually starts shining here. It's a bit chilly at the moment but on my way round to seeing where them fish were showing this is one of the swims that I really fancy. Right nice little quiet corner even though this wind is quite cold it's been blowing in here so I'm going to have five minutes, just plop me bait in there and see what the score is because uh, it only takes a second to get a bite as they say and this is a very instant method if they are in there and the way I'm just literally laying that morsel of food in the edge, I'm not casting, I'm just laying it down there as quiet as can be, hopefully it ain't going to spook anything. I've got an even bigger hope that there's something in this swim because that one just didn't produce, didn't have a good feeling about it. So here we go. As quiet as you can be, which is quite difficult when you've got size 13 feet and big obnoir boots on. It's a bit more of a trickier swing, but nice short drop. Just lower it out there. 